to snap in two. First big bump we go over. You better calm down, little sister. Don't let her alone, Nick. She's perfectly all right. Mm -hmm. Like a colt under his first saddle. I could remind you how you were the first time you addressed the Cattlemen's Association. Well, how was he? Well, he... <clears throat> we better not talk about that. Everybody's nervous the first time they face an audience. It's not that. It... Well, I don't want to disappoint you. You won't, darling. You won't. Anyway, I bet you're the prettiest new Bible class teacher those kids ever had. Thank you, he... Now, why didn't I think of that sweet talk? Sis, it's not as scary as it looks. Now, the children should be at Mr. Engstrom's at 9 o'clock. That'll give you plenty of time to get them here at 10. And, Nick, the children are going to church, not to a picnic. Why, thank you. You two will leave after you drop off the children, won't you? Is she asking us to stay away from our little sister's first Bible class? Nick, promise, please. Well, now, that's going to be a terrible disappointment. Don't worry, sis. We'll leave. It looks so different on Saturday. Once the children get here, you'll feel right at home. Come on. Pull it! Don't move. You're the one of you. Come on in! One's here. That's it, Ma. Get him inside. Don't hurt him any more than he's hurt already. Them women. Don't you worry, son. Your ma's looking after you. They ain't gonna cause any trouble. Unless they came to church to find a convenient place to die. See how bad it is? I don't mean to hurt you, son. Easy. Easy, you're gonna be just fine. Go take a look outside, Wes. See if anybody else is coming. Sorry to inconvenience you, but this boy's got a bullet in him. Couldn't go no further. 
Was that any reason to hold a gun on us? You the preacher's wife? No. Didn't expect to find anybody here on Saturday. My daughter is teaching a Bible class here at 10 o'clock. Troy, come give me some help. Hand me that canteen. I think I know who they are. So do I. Moth, there's going to be more people around here. We ought to get out of here. We can find a dock further up the road. We ain't going nowhere. This boy suffered enough. Why otherwise would we have stopped here? How far is it to town? Three miles. Is there a doctor there? Yes, you'll find his house. I'm not taking him into any doctor. He's coming here. I see. No, you don't. Well, it doesn't make any difference whether I see or not. Yes, it does. Because you're going to get him. Do you hear what I said? It upsets me when people don't do like I say. Maybe you don't know who I am. My name's Annie Morton. Yes, I've heard of you and your son. It's all clear, Ma. I also heard how you robbed and killed those two gold miners up at Settler's Gap yesterday. News travels fast. Is that where your son was shot? Yeah, it is. And this is where he's going to get better. With your help, lady. All right, Audrey, let's go. No, no. Not her. Just you. That way I'll be sure you come back real fast. And bring only the doctor. I want you to get one thing straight. You're going to do just what I say and how I say, and when I say. Or she's not going to be teaching a Bible class again. Bible class? I won't be long, Audra. Nobody will bother her. Just be sure you get back here fast. Troy, you go with her. Make it fast, Troy. Sit down. Go on. Are you comfortable, Lon? Wes. Wes, get over here and help me with your brother. You want him to die? He ain't gonna die, Ma. Not with you taking care of him. I'm telling that Doc Moyne. I know to. what to tell him. Well, just as long as you know. How much further is it? Less than a mile. Uh, Marsh, you're going to be jumping till we get back. Come on, get up. What brings you to town? Ivor, is the doctor in? No, Tom's up at Brown's Lake for the weekend to do some fishing. Oh. Well, may I borrow his medical bag? His medical bag? It's an emergency. Please, Ivor, I'm in a hurry. Oh, just a moment. Ain't there another doctor in this here town? No. Boy, oh, you're gonna be unhappy about that. Hey, how far is it to that Bronze Lake? It's a three-hour ride from here. Oh, my brother could bleed to death by then. That's why I asked for the doctor's bag. Here it is. I'll return it as soon as I can. 
Victoria, is there anything I can do to help? No. Thank you. Come on. I ain't gonna die, am I, Ma? Of course not, Ma. You'll feel fine as soon as the doctor digs out the bullet and binds you up. Uh -huh. Bible class teacher, huh? Good looking one, too. I don't remember him being that cute. Of course, I only went once. Just couldn't stand it indoors. Of course, it might have been different if they'd been as pretty as you. Sit down. Where is he? He wasn't in. You'll find all the instruments you need in here. I never dug a bullet out of my own son. Well, what about his brothers? No, they ain't no use. We gotta get out of here, Ma. And go where? To another town and find a doctor. And have him so shook up he don't live to get there? We got no choice, Ma. All right. I'll do it. You better put him on that table over there. Troy, Wes, come pick up your brother. I have three sons of my own. They've had more than their share of accidents that I've had to take care of when no doctor was available. I'll try and take care of your son. Well, that's good to know. But only on one condition. Condition? What makes you think you can talk to me about conditions? I'm not doing this for you or your boy. I'm doing it because I want you out of here by the time the children arrive. Is that the condition? Yes. You just get him well enough to ride. Make no sense for us to hang around after that. As long as you understand. Oh, now look here. Sure. Audra. Light the stove in the vestry. Boil some water. You're hurting him. He can stand it if you can. Acts like she knows how to fix a wound. Come on now, you don't have to act so unfriendly. A gal like you ought to have heaps of things to do with her time, besides teaching a Bible class. Uh, neither one of you are going to get hurt now. Fact is, we're 
kind of grateful for the way your ma's helping us out. You gave her no choice. Well, your ma wouldn't have just stood there and let my brother bleed to death. Sure is a shame I can't kind of stick around and sit in on that class you're going to teach. I don't think you'd like it. Maybe not. But I sure would like to teach her. What? Get out of here and up to the belfry. We need a lookout. Bang on the wall if you see someone coming. He never would have come near you if you hadn't given him a reason. We need the water. Bullet is in very deep. You told me you could save me. Is that what you I said? I said I would try. You should never have started if you weren't sure. Let her alone, Ma. She's putting an act on. Anyone does that, so I'll be sure what I'm doing. Anytime you want me to. Oh, keep going. But I'm warning you. Nothing better happened to him. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to stop this from hurting you. That's where someone must be coming. It isn't time for those kids to get here yet, is it? I don't know. Troy, go see who it is. I don't want him coming in here. You, get rid of him. Nothing else, girly. Just get him to go. Good morning, Reverend. Good morning, Audra. The children haven't arrived yet? My brothers went to get them. I uh, thought I'd stop by and see whether you needed some help. Well, thank you, but my mother's here with me. Oh, yes. You'll be needing the hymnals. I'll, uh, I'll get them for you. I already have them. That's fine. And the lesson. What's that going to be about? I thought I'd tell them the story of the prodigal son. Very good. Looks like you don't need my help at all. Then I'll see you and your mother at services tomorrow. Thank you for coming by. You're smarter than I thought. I'll get on with it. I found the bullet. Well, what are you waiting for? You're torturing him. My hands have to be dry.
Give me some bandage. <laughs> Here's another one. Hey, if you fellas got nothing better to do while the kids are in Bible class, you'd ride back over for a cup of my new season cider. Sweet or hard? I got them both. Well, you just keep that keg primed and we'll be over. Invitation as friendly as that, we'll be picking up the kids every week. Well, you boys are welcome anytime. Have a nice trip. All right, he... It'll start healing now. You're gonna be fine, Lon. Just fine. He can travel now. It don't hurt you now, do it? No. Not like it did, Ma. Oh, that's good. You can rest here. You said you'd leave as soon as I was through. That was the condition. The only conditions I ever abide by are those that suit me. Look at him. He's too weak to travel. He can travel. And you said yourself there's no point... Lady! You're wasting your time arguing with Ma. She says he ain't fit to travel, and that's the way it's going to be. Let's go, Ma. She fixed me up. I can ride. No, you ain't moving. That wagon ride's likely to open your wound up again. You start bleeding, you lost enough blood already. What about the children? They'll be here soon. They don't bother me. Filling them full of all kinds of pap. Making them think there's some kind of good Lord keeping a special eye on them. Why don't you tell them the truth? The only help you get in this world is when you help yourself. I'm asking you once again, please keep your word. Please go. I ain't risking my son's life. We'll go when I say he's ready. Must be those kids. Troy, take your brother upstairs. You can go on with your class, only be sure that's all you do. Because if I see or hear anything I shouldn't, I won't lose a moment thinking about it. I should never have asked Heath and Nick not to stay for the class. I'm glad you did. They're not armed. You think you can go through with it, Audra? I think so. Bring that doctor's bag up here! Yet? Yes. Sure you don't want to stick around, huh? Wait. Huh, too late. You had your chance. Besides, we're going over to Lee Engstrom's place to taste his new cider. So we'll see you a little later. Oh, where's Mother? Up in the choir loft. Good luck, sis. Sit in the back there and squat way down and uh, listen. Now, nah, Nick, we promised. Uh, it's that cattleman's meeting. I, you know, thought I had boots on backwards. I got up to speak, stepped on the chairman's foot. While I was speaking, I spilled water all over him. And after I got through, I stepped on his foot again, going back to my seat. <laughs> Will you get in? Oh, get some of that cider. As you probably already know, I, I'm going to be teaching this class from now on. And as you also probably know, 
My name is Audrey Barclay. Miss Audrey, if you like. It hasn't been so long since I sat just where you're sitting now. And maybe, just like you, I used to wonder whether my Sunday school teacher would make the lesson interesting enough to stop me from thinking about all the fun I could have been having if I were out there. Well, let's see if I can make our lesson exciting enough to put your imagination to work. Let's I don't want them fun. kids wondering where you are. Get on down to them. I don't think any of and don't you try anything. Because this gun will be on you every second. Fine cider, fresh and cool as a mountain stream. Mm-hmm. Not too sweet either. Tell me to come over some night for some of that hard stuff. Anytime, boys. Gravensteins and Spitzenbergs. That's the secret. Just a little of each, huh? <laughs> you trying to steal my recipe, Nick? Well, now I, uh, I figure I may as well learn from a good cider maker. That way, I gotta learn good. Then I can have him over to my house for some of mine. Now, don't use any that's spec. Wash them real good before you start your pressing. Your cider will be as good as mine. Thank you, Leaf. We better be going, Nick. All right, sir. If the women folk got time to stop by, they can taste my cider, too. in the next one already, Mom? The only way to get anything to work is to plan it ahead and to plan it right. Yeah. But you never planned on this. Or on you letting that miner take a shot at Lon. You know, I, uh, I thought he was dead and so did Wes. Anyway, we've been clear out of this valley by now. If you'd done like that woman said. What she wanted ain't what I want. What are you going to do with her and that gal when we leave? I ain't decided yet. Ma? We're going to get plenty of rest when we get up to those mountains. That gold will buy us everything we need until you're well and on your feet again. But what I'm really trying to say is that the more we know about others, the more we learn about ourselves. And all through the Bible, we find stories of people and their feelings toward one another. Most of these stories tell us of the love they have for each other and the sacrifices they made for those they love. But there are also stories of people who feel nothing but hatred for others who don't know what it is to feel real love. People like that are, are incapable of happiness. They live only with cruelty and violence. I was going to tell you the story of the prodigal son, but I think I'll save that for another time. This morning I'm going to tell you the story of two women. The name of one was Ruth, the name of the other was Naomi. The important part of the story deals with the love of the young woman Ruth for the older woman Naomi. 
It tells of their feelings for one another and is remembered to this day because of a moment in their lives when, when neither knew if they would ever see each other again. It was at this moment that Ruth turned to Naomi and said something that made Naomi realize how deeply she was loved by Ruth. She said, For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. If you'll all please open your Bibles to page 305 and read silently to the end of the chapter, we'll talk about it during discussion period. It ain't over yet, is it? The children will be going out for a short recess soon. If there's any feeling left in you, You'll leave as soon as they go out to play. I can arrange to have them play in an area where they won't even see you. Oh, believe me, this is no trick. Even if I wanted to, there's no one I could tell it to. You'll be miles from here before anyone else arrives. Please. Ma, I think I can travel now. I'd be in a lot worse fix than I am now if she hadn't helped me. I know what's best for you, boy. I think we ought to get out of here, Mom. You think I'm going to do what that woman tells me to do? We'll go when I'm good and ready and not before. She didn't fix Lana up because she wanted to. We'd be in jail this minute if she'd had the guns and not us. Ain't that true? Maybe. You see, I know all about your fancy kind. Afraid to breathe the same air we do. We belong in cages where they won't get... contaminated. Well, maybe if you'd had some hard times. When we're ready to leave, you and your daughter will know all about it. Now get back down there. Go on. Your Bible story was beautiful, Audra. Until today, that's all it was. Just a story. I'll go in and get the hymnal. interrupted. You'd better go. Ain't gonna be no interruptions this time. You're more out there with the kids. Mind busy up there. Down here! Fly! When I ain't watching you! 
old down skulls and swine. Nothing bad enough for you. Oh, going after some woman when your brother's lying up there dying. Heartless, good for nothing. Ought to kill you here. Kill you. Well, do it then. Do it. Kill you. Then I wouldn't have to worry about you no more. Wes. Arn. I'm sorry, Wes. I didn't mean none of that. What kind of a mom would I be? Killing my own flesh and blood that I give birth to. Kill my, my boy. My baby. Just like Lon and Troy. I wouldn't harm a hair on your head. Oh, except in, now and again when you get me round. But it don't mean nothing real. Just trying to show you what's wrong and what's right. Always. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. You ain't hurt bad, are you? It'd tear the heart right out of me if you was hurt bad. the lookout. We'll be leaving in a very short while. Nothing would have happened if she hadn't egged him on. That's a lie. Do you really believe your son needed that kind of encouragement? He's good. All my boys are. I've always made sure of that. Oh, you've made sure of a lot of things. That's all Annie Morton has ever done, made sure that she and her sons got what they wanted by helping themselves, by killing. How many did you kill when you held up the Denver stage or robbed that bank at Albuquerque? Did you get what you wanted when you killed that rancher in Tucson? Or those two gold miners at Settler's Gap? You got quite a bit of information about me, don't you? It has stared at me from a dozen posters. Get those kids back inside. time before they come back to them kids, Ma. Them two ain't gonna stay behind when we go. Well, now, you ain't thinking about taking them with us, are you now? I done my thinking. We're gonna get rid of them. Come on in. No, thank you, Jared. I just want to know, is everything all right? Well, it's a little quiet around here, if that's what you mean. Mother and Audra are down at the church. Audra's giving her first Bible class. And Nick and Heath are transporting all the children for her. Well, about an hour ago, your mother came to our place. She wanted the doctor, but he's away fishing. Well, what'd she want him for? Well, that's the funny thing. She didn't say. I thought it was someone up here who was sick. I gave her Tom's medical bag. Well, why wouldn't she tell you what she wanted with him? I don't know. 
She acted so strange. There was a man with her. Who was he? I never saw him before. They came in a wagon. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Marar, I'd better get right over to the church. Right. And uh, thank you very much. Not at all. Wes has got the other canteen. Go and get it, Troy. You don't want them around when we leave. Yeah, she's aiming to fix that. Easy. Shoot him. What does she want to go and do a thing like that for? Well, uh, you feel like arguing with her about it, Wes? Just don't think it's necessary, do you? Well, Ma, she don't pay much mind to what I think. Yeah, she's done okay up to now with no help from us. Except it's us that do the dirty work. It ain't right killing them two. She sat on it. Well, if you'd seen her face, you'd know she was. Well, I don't go along with her. It's all wrong. Well, I'll tell you, you said so, brother. on the floor. Get down on the floor. Drop that gun, drop it.
Jared! You all right? Who's that? My son. Get that gal out here. Leave her alone, please. Shut up! I gave you an order. They don't have to be no more killing, Ma. Look, I'll go get Law and we can get out of here. I told you to get that gal in here. Well, what's the use, Ma? Killing her ain't gonna help us none. We can, we can still make it up to the mountains before anybody else gets here. They killed Troy. And they gotta pay for it. That's reason enough. Now you go get that girl. Well, what's your reason, Ma? You ain't got no reason for killing her. I've got plenty of reasons. You've only got one, jealousy. You're going to kill a 19-year-old girl for no other reason than jealousy. Jealous? Why else would you do it? She's done nothing. That's right, Ma. She didn't do nothing. It was me that started on... You hit me. Your ma. You hit your ma. Couldn't help it. The way you treat me, the things you make us do. It was true what she said. You want to get rid of her because you're jealous every time I turn my head to look at a girl, let alone go near one. I'm warning you, Wes. It was the same with a gal in Wichita. The one I wanted to marry. What did you do but beat her up so bad she couldn't ever show her face again? And it'll be the same with Lon, too, when he's older, just like it was with me. He ain't never gonna be free of you as long as he stays with you. You gotta forget it, Ma. You gotta let these people go. I'll get her myself! Ma! Now you stay away from that girl or I'll kill you. I mean it, I'll kill you! Cider mill. Audra, give me a few glasses, will you please? I'm going to give you all the privilege of sampling the finest cider made this side of the old country. That's it. Jared, how much capital outlay do you think I'd need to put cider on a commercial scale? Well, that depends on its size. Five or six thousand dollars might cover the filtration plant, give you a first run of a few hundred gallons. Nick, you're not really serious about this, are you? Dead serious. Start in the apple orchard. Lay in a stock of Gravensteins and Spitzenbergs. And in a few years, we'll be shipping Barclay cider all over the state. Ah, now, will you look at that? Nectar is what it is. Not too sweet and not too dry. Ah, Heath, grab yourself a glass. Oh, what's that for? That jug of cider you gave me this morning. I gave it to Don Hamilton. The vet. That's right. After he sampled it, he tried it on his horse. He said, uh, said it beats all the liniment he's ever used. Great for a rubdown. And he's going to be using a couple more jugs near the end of the month. Um, let's, um, let's go into supper, shall we? By the way, I ran into the Reverend. He wants to know if you're going to teach next Saturday's Bible class. Of course. I think the Reverend found the right girl. <laughs> 